maybe I love mathematicians more than mathematics in itself. The only time I did research on my own was this month when uh, I decided to leave mathematics. There is like a tiger of algebraic geometry or whatever, and you don't want to go there and you have to find a way. Uh, I just don't work if I'm not motivated. Okay, Olga, you are like this. You do your popularization. You can't do otherwise. Do as you wish. Welcome to Math Life Balance. And uh, today our guest is Olga Paris Romaskevich, um, a CNRS researcher at Marseille Institute of Mathematics working in dynamical systems. Welcome, Olga, and I'm super excited to ask you about your experience in math. Thank you very much for inviting me, Mure, and I'm very excited as well to know what questions you have and try to give my answers. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So let's start. Uh, as far as I know, you come from a family with a tradition in mathematics, which is uh, often the case for Russian mathematicians. And I'm curious, did math research nevertheless feel like a choice for you and how was it? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, it's a big question for me because uh, this is a choice that don't, you don't make one time and then everything flows uh, easily. It's something, the choice to do mathematics for me is something that I redo almost every day uh, or maybe every year uh, so in the moments when I can think about it. So it's a very uh, long and complicated story, even though on my CV, uh, I never spent uh, time not doing mathematics. I was in this um, circle indeed. So I knew that mathematicians exist, which is not the case for many people. Uh, and I knew that this is possible as a, um, as a profession to do mathematics. Uh, and my grandfather was a, a researcher all his life. My parents are more um, teachers of mathematics and not researchers. And for example, my mother, she never wanted to speak about mathematics at home. Uh, so for me, mathematics was uh, more something I discussed with uh, friends and with people I met uh, in my school. Uh, and I think it's in my second school, which was already uh, mathematical profiled schools that I started to think to become a researcher. So of course the ground was prepared, um, but the choice I made to go to Moscow State University, for example, I think the choice was based mostly on the fact that I wanted to be with my friends and most of my friends wanted to go to the mathematical faculty. Probably if you would ask them, they would say the same, I don't know. But uh, I mean, it was a phenomenon of, uh, like everybody is there in this math school. Our teachers, uh, when they speak uh, about what we can do, they say, okay, you can go to Moscow State University to do math. You can go to another university in Moscow to do physics. And they, they were explicitly naming two or three choices. There was not, nobody would say, you can just abandon everything and go make cinema or work in a um, uh, boulangerie uh, shop, make your chocolate tarts, whatever, you know? Uh, we had these three choices. Mm, proposed to us and many went this way and I know that some of my uh, classmates shared that for them it was difficult after like maybe five years they had to rethink their career and sometimes uh, change their path and yeah so for me uh, I just in some way I just followed where my friends went uh, and I started to think uh, about choices and even just having an idea that I have a choice uh, very, very late. I think in the end of my, in the middle or end of my PhD, uh, I started thinking about these questions and about the fact that uh, at some moment you have to choose mathematics as your profession if you want to, to do it peacefully. Because if you don't choose it, it, it will, uh, in how to say, it will uh, infest you and you wouldn't be able to live your life. So you have to choose it uh, yourself in some way. So why do you choose it? Uh, mathematics, uh, I think it always felt meaningful for me. Uh, always. Uh, I, I, I found meaning and beauty in it. So this is, I think, already an important uh, part. You have to find your job 
uh, meaningful. Uh, and another thing, I think mathematics, I always tended to uh, people who are passionate and who are uh, excited. I, I just found that it's much uh, uh, more fun to be around people like this, that people who are bored or, or not excited by anything. Uh, and I found that mathematics uh, is uh, a place where there is enough of such people, you always can find them and you see them very easily. And um, when I was, uh, so I went to this mathematical school and I started meeting all these people. And yeah, and I think this is why um, I'm happy to see uh, all these excited people around me. And uh, this is a wonderful place to be. So this is one, uh, one and maybe very most important point. I still think that uh, maybe I love mathematicians more than mathematics in itself. Uh, which is maybe uh, a non-standard way to look at it. Like I was thinking about it uh, a lot recently and I was like, if I was alone on the island, would I do mathematics? Maybe I would because, but maybe I would just spend my life surviving. I don't know, but I mean, I think I do mathematics to share it with other people who do mathematics. I think it's the most uh, exciting part for me uh, and uh, so, yeah, people are uh, something that guided me a lot in this choice. Um, uh, and uh, now I've been doing mathematics, um, let's say I'm doing it for 15 years. Uh, it changed me. So now I have other reasons. Uh, I think it's also the way I, I look uh, at the world and it's impossible to get it out of my head. It, already uh, uh, changed how I how who I am so today it's very hard to uh, refuse mathematics completely uh, because if I refuse it I refuse a part of myself so it's a, it's a very complicated situation I don't know how uh, other mathematicians deal with it but because um, it uh, it it wants to have some part in you in your soul uh, and uh, you have to protect your soul, uh, not to be completely taken by mathematics. But uh, at the same time, um, it's wonderful to have it because it's a way of looking at the world uh, and to see beauty on some level, which you don't see if you don't have the mathematical language. Uh, so this is uh, also what attracts me in the subject in itself. Uh, and maybe the last reason is uh, the, its connection to culture. Um, so yes, I choose it because it's fun, because uh, there are nice people around and because there is something very long-term historically uh, developed and beautiful about mathematics, which you can't not feel. Uh, you, you feel it on some way. So you are attracted to it and you want to continue. Thank you for saying this thing that we don't hear very often about loving mathematicians and being around them. You're not alone with that reason <laughs> <laughs> to enjoy math. Um, thank you. So um, maybe a related question. Um, do you, so perhaps you do feel like a mathematician, right? But what does it mean to you? <sighs> Yeah, this is complicated because when you, it's it's hard to say uh, I'm a mathematician because uh, it depends who listens to you. Because if somebody who is not a math mathematician listens to you, they would probably imagine something awful. <laughs> and um, I, I think there is very much importance in how we formulate things. I like to say that I do mathematics. Uh, uh, because uh, it's it's related to what I said before. I think it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have to leave some part of your soul for other things. Uh, so for me, yes, being a mathematician is to do mathematics uh, first, and second, to not do it alone, to be part of the community in different ways you may do it. Um, so that's what it means to me. Uh, so, in some sense, this definition means that I can stop being a mathematician, theoretically. Uh, 
uh, and maybe this will arrive. I think that uh, for me, the way to be uh, in a good spirits is to say that I'm not uh, doomed to be a mathematician. I can uh, maybe at some moment completely stop this job. And I found for myself that this way of thinking makes me a better mathematician today. Uh, that I don't see it as a, um, um, as a something who I am, but much more something what I do uh, today and what I find interesting at this moment of my life. Um, so you mentioned already a few interesting things I wanted to ask about. So let me try to get back to those. So one thing you said is that mathematics has changed you. Um, could you try to describe in which ways? <sighs> and a related question uh, in the same direction. Uh, do you notice sometimes that some skills from mathematics help you in real life? Um, yes, OK. Uh, so how mathematics changed me? So the first uh, thing that comes to my head that I think I became more serious in the, in the following way. I think when I was a child, I was very, very um, playful and I always wanted to do the most stupid thing you can. I was, uh, uh, I really uh, wanted uh, to do fun uh, all the time. And there is fun part in mathematics, but there is also this very um, uh, serious part that says, okay, let's, uh, uh, stop for some moment and think what we know and look at the global picture. Uh, and this is what uh, uh, I learned to do. I, I, I think now that this is a, an integral part of my personality to look at a large scale and to try to connect uh, different ideas. And I'm not sure I had it in me when I was uh, very young. I don't, I'm not sure it's natural for me but today, I think it's something which, uh, which is obvious for me, which is a very, very big part of who I am. And I think in some way, mathematics did this to me. <laughs> Doing mathematics for uh, a long time uh, makes you connect things, because otherwise you just can't enter all this information in your head. You have to arrange it in um, in some meaningful way for you, like to tell a story or like to, to have uh, different parts connected. So yeah, this is uh, uh, how mathematics changed me and how it helps in real life. Um, um, I think there are many skills I learned by doing mathematics, which are maybe not necessarily mathematical, but uh, which helped me a lot. Uh, uh, for example, uh, not be scared when I don't understand, for example. Uh, I think it's, it's quite interesting because I think mathematicians are used to not understanding like 99% of the time. It's just normal. If you understand, you're very happy, but you know it it's always, almost never happens. And uh, I, I met many people who are not mathematicians, who are not used to this feeling, or some people even never felt it. They always understand what happens. And for me, it's very uh, impressive because I can't imagine how you live such a life because I never lived this life. And now today, this life scares me. I, I don't want to understand everything all the time. Uh, I will resist it. And I think I am resisting very well because I'm going in the direction I understand even less. So. I think this is uh, what helps me to uh, not be scared. And I think to learn uh, faster and to learn more things uh, because I'm very interested in different domains and I'm not at all um, uh, resistant of going somewhere where I have not seen before. And I think many mathematicians uh, have this um, skill or set of skills. Uh, I heard many mathematicians say, oh, I don't know this, but I can learn it. And sometimes even not looking before at what uh, the subject exactly is, there is just this confidence that I can learn anything. Uh, and uh, I think it comes from the fact, depends on stories, but uh, uh, I think like if you have learned differential geometry, you can learn everything. You can. It may be it may be a wrong feeling, but I think this confidence is important not to be uh, scared uh, of uh, discovering new worlds.
So this is uh, something that helps a lot. And I think there are other things, for example, making talks, I think regularly enough uh, makes you more confident in discussions and speeches. I know that I progressed a lot just by thinking about how to make talks. Uh, I think this is also something which helps you in real life. Um, yeah, so these are two things, but I think there are many, many skills we learn uh, when we do mathematics, uh, which are not only related to uh, research in itself. Um, and I think also asking for help uh, is uh, something we learn when we do mathematics. Uh, at least for myself, it, I think it's uh, very fun to go to some person who you think knows better some particular uh, thing and ask them, just simply ask them, and people love to help. I remember it was uh, quite recently I did a um, talk at a conference and I made a talk uh, and uh, somebody, so they asked others some questions in the public and I think there was there were no questions. There were some in the talk, but in the end of the talk, there were no questions. And I was like, hmm, do, okay, I have a question for you. And I asked a question to this big conference of maybe 100 to 200 people. And it was amazing because what happened is that maybe five or 10 people answered directly from different points of view on uh, uh, the question I asked. And after the conference, I received five mails from different people who started thinking about this problem. And I was very surprised it never happened to me before. It was extremely wonderful for my research. So I think mathematicians uh, uh, are very, very open to answer and to help. Uh, and they sometimes do it uh, with much will that uh, to do their own research, uh, at, at least some, some of them do. And uh, yeah, I think this is also very wonderful uh, thing that mathematics taught me is to ask questions and also be happy to answer the questions of others. Yeah, this is great. And I'm happy that you say such uh, wonderful words about mathematicians and the community, but you have mentioned that part of your work is as you uh, think of it to make some changes in the way we work or the way we think. So uh, what are those changes that you have in mind? Um, so as any community, uh, I think we have uh, pro progress to do in many directions. I think this is uh, more subtle and uh, there are many differences dependent on countries, for example. Um, uh, so I have worked most of the time in France. Um, and um, I'm very uh, interested in uh, inclusive uh, seminars, activities, and a general inclusive atmosphere in the lab. Uh, I think it's related to the fact that personally myself, I don't feel uh, well in the lab where uh, it's not explicitly clear that I'm welcome. Uh, and uh, I wanted to install uh, and continue to do it, uh, some initiatives that would cry it out for anybody who comes uh, in the lab. I think it's related to the story that uh, when I came to France, I was a foreigner uh, and I didn't understand how the system works, I, even though I spoke uh, French already well enough and it helps. Um, I still had uh, lots of confusion about how to do some administrative details, how, uh, how do some meetings work. Of course, mathematics was more or less clear uh, uh, thanks to God, but uh, there are many things uh, which were not clear at all. Uh, and, uh, and I didn't know who, whom to ask help. Uh, so maybe there were some official, uh, I don't know, secretaries or uh, theoretically I could ask some questions to my supervisor, but in practice who helped me most were some PhD students who were around and uh, whom I became friends with. Uh, and I also felt uh, in the first lab I was when I did my PhD that um, there is some um, that people are disconnected by um, by their status uh, in the meaning that PhD students were in one corridor uh, they had their offices in one corridor and uh, 
uh, researchers that had their offices in another corridor, and some of the activities were not intersected. This is also interesting for PhD students to have their seminar where uh, senior researchers are not uh, uh, admitted. I think it's a very good uh, idea, but uh, I wanted to uh, propose something where anybody could go uh, and the mathematics could flow uh, among different uh, people with different um, uh, on different levels of their career. Uh, I don't remember if I already knew this story about Pixar company. So in Pixar, they have this uh, section uh, in the beginning of the production of any uh, animated movies. They have this room where anybody can go. You can be the director of the company or the first day animator and anybody can give their suggestions uh, to the movie uh, on the very early stage. And uh, I think it's a very um, good and creative way to approach a project. And I think in mathematics, we need it a lot. And I think it's not, there is a progress to do on this, uh, on this inclusivity because uh, people more attend to speak with whom they already know. Uh, and uh, it makes uh, the community disconnect a little bit. So I'm wondering about it because usually when people speak nowadays about inclusivity, <clears throat> they refer to admitting and like giving uh, positions and places to people from say different uh, backgrounds and stuff. But I think that inclusivity is much more than that. So I wonder what is inclusivity for you? Yes, so I think that uh, we can speak about uh, different minorities, or we can speak about uh, women in mathematics. We can speak about uh, people coming from different countries. And there are all these ways uh, and situations in which you can be pushed out of the community uh, because of the reasons uh, that society is not fair and there is lots of injustice on many levels. And uh, there is lots of work which is done in this direction. Um, and there are very particular um, um, programs. But for myself, I think that any, uh, any such division between uh, uh, somebody and somebody else, it comes from the same atmosphere and this can be changed in a global way. So you can kind of solve all those problems, but by generalizing them and uh, finding a, a solution on a high level. Of course, it's much more harder in real life than in mathematics, but uh, I think that creating the atmosphere in which uh, everybody greets everybody in the corridors of the lab, for example, uh, uh, is already very important because it's not the case. I, I didn't... Uh, I was not always greeted in the labs, for example, when I came there as a, as a PhD student or as a postdoc, there were people who would just be, pass by and not say hello, you know, this kind of things. Uh, so uh, I think that um, for me, inclusivity is, yeah, it's hard to define, but it's, um, uh, it's putting in place some explicit, uh, uh, rules or um, explicit initiatives uh, in the in the space you work in and at work, let's say, that uh, explicitly kind of cries out to people who come, uh, you are welcome here. Uh, for example, if some some PhD student arrives, so that could uh, their picture would appear on uh, the labs. Uh, uh, site or uh, there would be some uh, in the beginning of the year there would be some cocktail party I don't know where the speech the student can tell who they are and what mathematics they do it's extremely important to uh, create connections fast uh, and there can be tutoring uh, of people to um, to help them integrate uh, better and many things are done in this direction but I think that uh, in practice, when you look at the labs, there are still many, many problems. And uh, uh, there are sometimes stories of uh, complete disconnection of uh, PhD students, uh, postdoctoral researchers, and even uh, permanent researchers in the, in the labs. And many people really suffer a lot. There is lots of suffering, uh, which I think can be avoided 
in, in if we put in place uh, all this atmosphere and sometimes if i hear people say we don't have money for this or we don't have time and i don't think you need uh, as much time and money actually for the things i think what is needed is just a discussion and that um, a big part of the community is doing something um, um, in, in this direction, just open to people, uh, graceful to anybody who comes. You don't know a person, you greet them and you ask where they come from, you know, this level. And I think it's very important for us to 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 be open to people who come um, because they, they can help us do math. And more importantly, it's just, it's human life. I mean, it's, it's I think I would dare to say that it's more important than mathematics. Uh, yeah, actually you reminded me that for me, the happiest moment uh, relating me to the world of mathematics outside Russia was not even being accepted to do a PhD in Germany, but the email from my future advisor that came before that, which was an email asking me to vote for a topic for a seminar, which was a complete shock for me because during previous five years of studying at the university, no one asked me, which is my choice <laughs> for a topic for a seminar. And it made me feel more included than ever before. <laughs> um so yeah yes i i, I think that um, this is also this is a part of this process to ask uh um not senior but younger researchers to participate in an active way not to give them tasks uh but to ask them what they want to install what to do and i think that it's we are also just losing lots of energy and lots of um uh, wonderful ideas, but not asking this uh, explicitly. So yeah, and and indeed, it feels wonderful when somebody asks for your help because you are just sitting on the chair and waiting when somebody would ask. Because you, what is awful for PhD students and awful, I don't know, but I mean, uh, they they sometimes they don't think they can do it. They because they're already in this uh, idea of uh, I only do what they ask me to do. A PhD is only my responsibility, and there is this um, um, so, some kind of prejudice in our community that you have to close up on yourself to do uh, mathematics. But I I think it's the inverse, and I think many of course many mathematicians understand it. But I remember that uh, when I was writing my PhD, I had this feeling that. Uh, um, I have to, it's like my responsibility and nobody will help me with it. You have to do it. And I think it's wrong and it's, it's, we shouldn't forget, uh, uh, it's, it's almost the inverse. Uh, so yeah, I think it's very important to include in any way uh, PhD students. And I think they should spend time not only on writing their thesis, but also on speaking about math on seminars and uh, participate in the lab activity. Mm. Um, so when you said that um, you may dare to say that life is more important than math, uh, you reminded me of a quote of yours from a, a different outreach project uh, where you said that um, mathematics, uh, even pure mathematics, is an instrument uh, for life. Uh, could you comment on that? Because I found it a very interesting thing to say. I think that if you know something well enough or you spend time on something, uh, it will become your instrument, even sometimes when it's not conscious. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think this quote, uh, uh, I think I want to, to say to people that mathematics is not disconnected from life and uh, uh, you can learn mathematics and, uh, uh, and be human. And I think this is uh, um, something we sh really shouldn't forget. And it's, uh, uh, for me, it's uh, the way to advertise mathematics as well to people who are not uh, doing it all the time. Uh, it it can be what I want to say when it's a tool. I think it's uh, it's very practical in some sense. You just understand how uh, that in the clock uh, there are two circles which are running one on another with some velocities or, for example, something like this. You you understand you understand better how the uh, world works, 
and I think it's also um, a way of connecting with people, at least for me it is. And um, I remember it worked re really well in one uh, of the uh, outreach uh, projects I did. So it was, uh, it's called Pint of Science. It's a uh, world uh, festival of science. So you do uh, short presentations in bars. So I did a presentation uh, on knot theory uh, uh, in the bar for, for people who never heard of uh, it at all. And uh, I did, I, I spoke about some applications of knot theory in the real life. And so I met people um, uh, touch each other, like take hands uh, to make a big, big knot or maybe link to a link. Uh, and, um, and I think they were all prepared that I will make them do some math or to just change hands or whatever. Uh, and I said, it's just the way, okay, we're all holding somebody and it's a way to connect and that's all. That's finished. Exercise is finished. And I think now that this was a very, um, this reflects a lot uh, my way of looking at mathematics. Uh, maybe because when I came to France, I was a little lost, uh, maybe my, much more than little lost. And for me, mathematics was a, little, uh, is, was a way to connect. Uh, and for me, it is a tool to live because uh, I can make this, uh, joke in the pint of science bar and people will laugh and be, be happy uh, and for me it's uh, a way to share something from my personality with people um, and that's that's what it is to me mathematics it's a way of connection to mathematicians but not only to mathematicians and you even don't really need to go into detail explaining mathematics etc you just uh, you know, need to be yourself and do some stupid joke with mathematics, it's, it's possible. You don't need to be very serious a scientist to explain uh, mathematics, um, because uh, as uh, far as I felt with general public, people, sometimes they want you to explain the mathematics and to, they want to learn some, some particular thing. But most of the time, they just want to touch a little bit on this world and to understand what mathematics does to us. So, um, as I've seen uh, from your webpage, uh, you do, you've, do, you've done and are doing a bunch of um, outreach and popularizing math projects. And I find it very curious because I often have dreams about popularizing math, but then I uh, successfully convince myself that um, no one will appreciate and this will be stupid. <laughs> so, uh, it's great that you're doing this. And could you tell about an example of a math popularizing project that you are? Mm -hmm. So about appreciation, I recently uh, re uh, recently listened to an um, interview of uh, Vladimir Pratasov, who is a math Russian mathematician who does lots of popularization and lots of uh, plain geometry uh, exercises and problems. And he said something about it, which I think it's, is very true. He said that, okay, you're a mathematician, you are doing your very hard research, very specialized. And then doing popularization, people, it will always find the public because your research maybe, it depends who you are, but like two or three or four, or maybe 10 people will be interested in what you do. Uh, uh, and, uh, if you do popularization, it will always, any article, any video, any whatever you do, exhibition, will find its public in a, it, it is uh, assured that this, this will have an impact on the much global scale. So I think popularization in this sense um, is uh, very pleasant for, for the ego because you, you really can have an impact very fast uh, and I think it's, for me, it's very helpful because mathematics is frustrating and you don't have this feeling of, okay, I got a result very fast. And popularization, you can uh, really share mathematics and see how uh, people smiled or thought about something they never thought about. And it's, uh, and it's wonderful. And I think also popularization is a domain which has some story, but which is very much developing now how many YouTube channels on mathematics there are. It's amazing. Uh, and uh, uh, I think there is lots to do. It's, we have to invent, invent the art and the form 
uh, is not yet fixed. So you can do more or less whatever you want. So you always can find the way to popularize mathematics, which is not only explaining that uh, a cup and a donut have the same genus. You can do some whatever you want uh, and um, find uh, a way to express yourself. So for me, I think this is the most important. I think I uh, always wanted to do some art. Uh, and uh, for me, popularization is something which is uh, socially acceptable for a research mathematician as a form of art. But I uh, noticed that the more I do popularization, the more my popularization projects become uh, <laughs> original or out of uh, standard. Mm. So uh, this is uh, this is my approach to popularization. I think it's uh, very pleasant uh, for a math researcher because it connects you to the real world and at the same time uh, permits you to few some results or some 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 reaction very fast and for me it's a, it's a way to survive from frustration uh, of research <laughs> you need you need to find everybody has their trick this is my trick and uh, um, and for example today the project i'm working on is a, a more personal project it's a project with a, my husband and collaborator, Bertrand, and he uh, is a photographer. Uh, he's not a professional photographer, but he uh, really loves doing pictures. And I think they look like professional photographers' pictures. And uh, I wanted to do a project about um, mathematics in Russia uh, and uh, ideas to uh, go through Russia and speak to, for, with different women who are working in the um, mathematical field, maybe researchers, but also teachers or administrative staff in the universities, people who work in the Olympiad community. And our plan is to cross Russia and to speak uh, with uh, them and to make their pictures and the pictures of their cities and of mathematical labs. And uh, I hope it works out well. Uh, in this uh, coronavirus times, it's uh, a little bit tricky. We still don't know if we will be able to go. For now, the um, frontiers are closed. I'm very interested in this trip because I want to see how mathematics uh, works today in Russia. Since it's been almost 10 years, I haven't really been in the mathematical community in Russia. Uh, I will be very interested to see how it works in Moscow, even though I, Moscow I know pretty well, but Khabarovsk or Novosibirsk, I mean, I have no idea. I have never even gone to the cities as a tourist and uh, as a mathematician either. So for me, it's very interesting to see how Russia uh, lives today uh, from this mathematical point of view as well. You're very brave. Um... <laughs> Yeah, but you know, when I planned the project, I, the, some of the things didn't happen yet, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I still want to go, even in the context of today's, uh, today's Russia. Uh -huh. I think it's even more interesting, even though more tricky. So, um, you mentioned um, uh, speaking to mathematicians, and this reminded me that actually I must say that you're the inspiration for my YouTube channel because it all started with me seeing your webpage at the end of December. And at that moment, I was at the, one of the lowest points of my mathematical frustration. So I saw how many cool projects you're doing and I thought, oh, she's doing all these cool projects, why she can and I can't and I just dream about things. And then I wrote you that super pathetic email about, oh, I wish I could at least do interviews with mathematicians, but I only dream about it. And I mean, because I saw that you've done some interviews and then I sent the email and then I kept on thinking and I didn't really realize why, why am I not doing it? <laughs> it didn't make any sense to me after I sent the email. <laughs> so let me, yeah, so thank you very much for the inspiration. Oh, yeah, but I think I was maybe the last drop and not really an inspiration. <laughs> well, uh, and another thing I want to say, because I think I dream a lot uh, and I think you need to dream to do something because uh, there is like to do something you have to have been dreaming about it for a very long time before so i think in some sense all we do is just like a top of the iceberg of our dreams which is enormous and there are unfortunately some dreams which will never be realized but they need to be there to push kind of push out the things that we do 
So I, I, I think that dreaming is extremely important and we, uh, uh, we, we should really praise people who dream and don't do much stuff because at some moment they will do it. <laughs> Just uh, we need more time for the dreams to, to push it out. In some That's sense. true. But <laughs> nevertheless, let me ask you. So as I said in the beginning, you're a CNRS researcher, which means that your main and only duty to work is doing research. So how do you uh, find the courage to do lots of side projects? And is there external pressure or do you have internal guilt about not spending all your time on research? How, how do you manage all that? Yes, so I'm a CNRS researcher only starting this October. So maybe my internal guilt didn't have time to develop enough. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but but the, I think there is another uh, reason I feel uh, pretty confident today. Uh, so what happened is that I uh, did my PhD thesis and then I worked on uh, for three years on different postdoctoral positions, let's say, and um, I applied to CNRS uh, for three times in a row. Um, there is another. So in France, and I wanted to stay in France, there are two types of positions, one uh, only research and another one with uh, um, a pretty uh, hard amount of um, teaching, like six hours per day, uh, per, per uh, week, I think, or maybe even more, maybe eight. And uh, for me, um, I felt I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be possible for me to do this amount of teaching. I love sharing, but, uh, and I love popularizing, but I need time for this. Um, and, uh, and I think I was sure that CNRS is a much better way for me. And uh, that uh, another position with teaching would just, I would be too tired and I would not be able to do and, all what I would like to do and have the energy. So I kept applying CNRS. And when I didn't get it the third time, uh, which is already quite a long route uh, in this system, I, I was very um, sad and um, scared. And I think I, I was uh, thinking to, I was thinking to leave mathematics. I was really decided to, okay, I didn't get this position. Um, I should just leave. And I got um, some additions to uh, the teaching positions and I uh, decided not to go, which was very difficult for me because, uh, for example, in Marseille, the place I am now today as a NRS researcher, I got this audition and uh, I refused it. And I know it was a big shock for people who were waiting uh, uh, to audition me there. And uh, it was hard to look in their eyes because it, the, many people there were my collaborators. But I knew that I wouldn't be happy in this, uh, in this uh, position of a, of a teacher and teacher and researcher. Uh, and um, so I stopped. I stopped for one year and I, I didn't have any, uh, any research position at all. I was just living in Lyon. Uh, and I had this uh, was I had this insurance from French state to for one year, so I was paid a little bit to just live my life. My plan was to just get dressed, uh, have some uh, cleaning done in my head, and to see what I want to do if I don't do mathematics. Uh, and what happened is that once I decided to leave research, I was able to prove some theorem, like. <laughs> two months or three months after I decided, okay, I'm leaving mathematics, because the thing was that there was this one conjecture. It was not a serious conjecture. It wouldn't, it's like, wouldn't uh, help anybody uh, to solve it. Uh, um, but I was thinking like, okay, if I leave, nobody will do it. Nobody, nobody is interested in this except for me. So I was feeling I'm leaving something not finished uh, and I was still interested. So I continued working in it and uh, it happened that I proved it uh, uh, in, after I decided to leave mathematics. And then, you know, you have to write it down and it takes you six months. And what, <laughs> what happened is that I just continued doing math. I, uh, this year when I was supposed to think what I should do if I don't do math, I just did math. So, uh, so I, I applied one more time to CNRS. It was in December, so I was like, Okay, I still don't know what I want to do with my life. So uh, there is this uh, application 
I will apply. I will explain what I would like to do. And of course, once I proved the conjecture, there were some tools I developed. So I had many ideas that I, um, I am still developing today. So uh, I applied and I got the position. And so to answer your question, uh, in some way, I consider the fact that I got this position as that the sky is saying to me, the sky or the sunrise jury is saying to me, okay, Olga, you are like this. You do your popularization. You can't do otherwise. We give you the position, do as you wish. Do your research in the proportion you want with popularization. So for me, since I took this year off and mathematics took me back and it's, uh, I have heard from, everywhere uh, many times uh, mathematics will never get you back it's ex extremely rare that you leave mathematics like this and it takes you back it got me back so i'm like you took me back you accept me as i am you know so for me there is um, uh, this uh, this place big row i think for, for me to be uh, uh, more calm about this and also, I think it's related to what I said in the beginning. Uh, for me, the way to do mathematics is to collaborate. So if I see uh, my collaborators regularly enough, I will do mathematics. There is, it, it, I can't be stopped because if I see people and they keep me asking me the same question, we need to push through it together. So I won't abandon uh, if there is somebody on the team. So for me, it's... Um, uh, easy to do research in this sense. The only time I did research on my own was this month when uh, I decided to leave mathematics and I just couldn't leave this thing because I knew there is nobody else who would do it. But now today I'm, I'm having the collaborations and uh, uh, they mean a lot to me. So I will, uh, so I will continue. Uh, I find your story extremely inspiring because so many young mathematicians are very afraid to not get an exposition. And uh, I've only met people who have quit math. I've never met per a person who has take a taken a year off and then um, continued in math uh, in, in the way you ex described. So that's great that you have this experience and that it shows that life doesn't end and even math life doesn't end apparently. <laughs> yes, I consider myself very lucky as well. Uh, but I think it's, uh, it, I, mm. A price to pay not being yourself is much bigger than anything else. So I think uh, I also consider myself a young mathematician still, but uh, I think people who are searching for the position or who are doing a PhD, uh, even before, the, the faster you find the mathematics you love and the, the way you like to do mathematics, uh, however, um, how to say conservative it is or not you just have to find your way the faster you do this uh, uh, the better for you because at some moment you will have to uh, figure this out and i think that indeed there are not enough positions but i think that um, mathematical community is trying to find different ways uh, and reach your ways to do mathematics uh, to also to open itself to um other stories i have so for example one of my friends marie with whom we done uh, uh, an exhibition she's today a um, mathematical storyteller so she always wanted to do stories to tell stories and uh, she does this uh, in french it's called contes she's telling tales for children uh, but in her tales there are mathematical objects so she did a phd in mathematics but today she's not a researcher, but she's still doing mathematics. She needs to understand, uh, I don't know, how fractals work to be able to make her uh, snowflakes and for her tails. So there are many ways. This is another way, but there are so many. And I think not all of them are inside academia. Uh, but if you want to stay in academia, even uh, you have to find your own way of doing things. Uh, and it's hard to, uh, to put it in your head because it's still very conservative uh, community, um, but I think we need we need a difference to do mathematics in a better way. And uh, if you are different, <laughs> I'm speaking to some person who is listening to us. But I think if a person is uh, different, they they sh they they should continue because you you really can't change uh, yourself. It's better to change uh, 
the world around. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So it's world around. Uh, uh, I had a unrelated question. Um, which atmosphere around you or maybe decorations help you to focus on mathematics? Yeah, I think regularity is very important. You you have to get back to it regularly. And for me, the main motivation is to speak to people. So I just try to speak to people regularly and everything else uh, is a consequence of this. I, I can't, for example, kind of force myself to work on mathematics from nine to four every day or like even from nine to 10 every day. It's it's impossible. But if I'm motivated, I, I can work for a long time. And I think there is another thing. Um, when I'm not motivated, I don't work. And I think this is uh, something I didn't do from start. I also changed it. Uh, I just don't work. If I'm not, I don't, I, I, and I know it's maybe a bad advice to give to PhD students and uh, for people who have very rough deadlines, even though I have deadlines still, uh, I just don't work if I'm not motivated, but I try to make myself motivated in different ways. So for me, this is a main focus of my uh, putting things around myself to, to be able to do my work, because if I'm not motivated, I just don't work. I, I will just uh, escape the work. Uh, so I prefer just to wait to the moment when I really want to do it. Of course, it's for research, but there are things you just have to do it, like administrative things or answering mails. So this I have to keep the, the timetable. Uh -huh. I see. Thank you. So I've always dreamt of meeting someone who gave a TED talk. And finally, I have this <laughs> person in front of me. He gave a TED talk in French, uh, which is translated uh, to those who don't love mathematics. Right? Yes. Uh, and so finally, I can ask this question, which always bothers me. Did you learn it by heart? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, uh, so there are, I think there are so yeah of course i don't think giving a ted talk is actually uh, such an important way to become famous i think it's uh, just a talk uh i believe that uh, the presentation goes better if you learn it by heart and you don't read it so i read it i learned it by heart by making tours in the garden and ran um uh, yes, so the problem with learning by heart is that you still need to keep some flexibility because if you forget something, you have to find a way to get back to it. And once I did a um, um, kind of performance and I was playing an old woman who is speaking about the world of mathematics and uh, Bertrand, my husband, uh, was in the public and I said to him, okay, if I forget something, I will say, young man, do you remember what I had to say? And so it happened to me and I was like, young man, do you remember what I had to say? <laughs> and, so... <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, you just have to know what, what to do in the cases if it's complete failure. But on TED talk, I considered it serious enough that I, nobody would help me. Uh, and uh, so I was a little tense, which is also coming back to the idea I said before. It's better to have people who will help you. Your, your beautiful talk uh, made me uh, want to ask you the next question where you don't have to repeat the answer you gave in the talk. Uh, but I wonder uh, which metaphor would you use to describe math research to someone outside? Metaphor. There are different ways people usually describe it, and uh, and there is always a struggle and an exploration. So in the talk, yeah, I used uh, a metaphor of the ship going through the sea. Uh, I heard other mathematicians describe it as a mountain uh, climb. Uh, and let me tr try another one. Uh, maybe there is some kind of cleaning in the house situation that you live in this enormous uh, mansion with many, many floors and rooms and you don't even know how many rooms there are. And uh, maybe it's a little bit like Hogwarts-like when some directions are changing and you have to clean it up. 
you have to kind of clean up the mess and there are books everywhere and flowers and some animals who go around and you sometimes have to avoid some corridors because there is like a tiger of algebraic geometry or whatever and you don't want to go there and you have to find a way no i mean for you it's <laughs> not a tiger it's just a kitten but for me sometimes it's a tiger so it's it depends on the person as well you know <laughs> no it's a tiger it's very much a tiger <laughs> And some animals can change form. So you have this enormous, uh, and I like this metaphor of the castle with animals because uh, this metaphors with uh, rocks and forests, it feels like it's the same, all mathematics is the same. It's like all trees or all uh, rocks. I think mathematics are very different. There are some mathematics which are like butterflies and some other mathematics which are like tigers and some other which are like lakes where you have to uh, find something. So it's very rich as a world. Um, uh, and you have to clean it up, at least uh, to find some roots, to find some roots where you, you can kind of soak all around and be safe and find some joy in it. So I think this is a situation. And sometimes you find somebody in the corridor and you are happy to meet them because this is a crazy place. And uh, it's better to be together than alone. <laughs> Something like this, maybe. This is a beautiful metaphor. <laughs> but I hope you do want to meet a tiger eventually. Maybe I should show you the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I met it a couple of times, but maybe I, I just seen it. Uh, you know, it's uh, passing very fast. <laughs> um, let me ask you the last question. So, uh, from what I gather recently from my friends and people I talk to, uh, because of pandemic and it's. Uh, on everlasting lockdowns. Uh, I think uh, many people feel lost right now who are doing mathematics and uh, that's quite frustrating. So uh, do you have any advice for people who currently feel lost in math? Yes, I think so. This year, the I think we just should not, not put pressure on yourself, just use this time to, uh, to take care, to take care of yourself. Uh, because I think we, this is very hard time to think about productivity and work. Just use this time to take care of yourself. And if in the moment uh, you, uh, uh, you want to do mathematics and uh, you are inspired to do it, but concentrate first on taking care of yourself, because I think we shouldn't neglect it. And this is a, it's, it's not like a, two hard days. It's something which is already going on for for almost a year and will still continue for at least six months, uh, probably more, I don't know. But uh, I think it's a long, uh, it's a long run and uh, research is a long run as well. But especially um, this year, I think we should just uh, concentrate on taking care of, on finding joy on not forgetting to, uh, uh, eat, sleep, uh, exercise, I don't know, speak to people you love, uh, make things uh, uh, or do things you that really help you be yourself. Uh, and I think if you do this, uh, mathematics will follow uh, along. 